typically in the West, let's say North America, the, and, it, and it varies on region and people, and there's all these varieties there, but there is kind of a, a median that people adhere to when they talk about the Bible. Your view, though, takes it into a different realm in that it becomes performative. It's, again, not passive, but it's active. It invites people to be participants in it. How has this differed historically from what we've seen being worked out in our Bible-believing churches here in the United States? It's a big question, and I, I won't be able to do it justice because I'm going to have to generalize. And, uh, you know, I'm on dangerous ground. It's like thin ice when you generalize because uh, a counterexample, well, a counterexample is like a crack in the ice, right? So I'm going to, but, but in general, and I don't say this at, in all times and places. I think the early church was very involved in, and, you know, the martyrs. So let me just back up. There have been martyrs, and the martyrs are the ultimate actors, not least because in their, the way they act is by suffering for their faith. That's the ultimate kind of act, right? To suffer for your witness. But martyr means witness. And the early church was very concerned that their lives, their communities, witness to the reality of the gospel. That's what I care about. What's happened, I think, more recently is that the emphasis has been put on believing right things. And faith has been reduced to belief. And I know there are there are reasons for this, right? We don't want to get into the right. idea where we're justified by our works. So let me say up front, that's a possible danger of overemphasizing a dramatic model that, you know, the emphasis is on what you do, what you say, and that can generate pride and so on. I don't want to support any of that. So I, wa I want to flag it as a possible weakness of the model. But on the other hand, I don't think that believism, the idea that being a Christian is simply believing the right things, that's not biblical. That's my main problem with it, right? The demons believe, but mm -hmm. tremble, says James. So believism is not enough. And I think you know, when, when Christians confess Christ, we have to do more than believe intellectually something. We have to believe in the sense that this is going to make a difference in our <laughs> lives, right? To believe that Jesus is Lord, if you're really believing that, you have to act as if Jesus as Lord. You have to respond to him as Lord. And so that's why we do have, again, in James, you know, faith without some kind of work, faith without some kind of active response, that's just, uh, that's just on paper. That's just theoretical faith. Mm -hmm. Real faith implies discipleship, and discipleship requires walking, which is a, the biblical code word, as it were, for conduct. Mm -hmm. And so you can't be an armchair disciple, okay? You, you can't be a theoretical disciple, but I'm afraid that's what believism uh, you know, promotes, the idea that if to be a Christian means you believe this set of things, that's not, that's not going to generate genuine disciples. So I think, to be honest, I think the real problem today is that a picture holds many people captive. A picture of the Christian as one who believes certain things or votes in a certain way, right? And in other words, it's the positions you hold. It's not what you do, it's the positions that you hold. Now, look, I'm a systematic theologian. I care about the positions, but it's not at the end of the day about the positions. It's about the effect of these positions on our life. So I, I do think that is the problem. Uh, I may be wrong about this, but there's this picture in people's minds of a Christianity without discipleship. Mm. And to my mind, that's a contradiction in terms.